Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. If you've been following this channel for some time, you may have noticed that I haven't shared an episode in well over a week and that is unusual to say the least. Now, the reason why is I've been doing a lot of research on VPNs, uh, you know, because I promised this sub-series on setting up our own StrongSwan servers and SOX5 over SSH proxies. Now, I've been running my own self-hosted server, uh, VPN, sorry, for about a year, if not two years now, and things have been going well. The one thing that came onto my radar lately is if, if you're using a device that is assigned an IP version four and an IP version six address, uh, and the VPN is not IPv6 enabled, chances are that you're gonna be leaking IPv6 traffic outside of the VPN. Now, whew, that was a mouthful. The thing is, I've done research using websites such as ipleak.net, and uh, those tests reveal that in theory, I'm not leaking IPv6 traffic. So my gut feeling is the way uh, IKE v2 slash IPsec is you know done on Mac devices, uh, or on you know iOS devices, so Mac OS or iOS, that the routing table is done in a way where IPv6 traffic is dropped versus leaked. Now, I wanted to really make sure that the information that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys is accurate as well researched, so I reached out to people on server fault and apparently it would still be leaking IPv6. So that really, you know, it, that's where I've been uh, in the past week. I've been doing a lot of research. It's very hard to get this stuff peer reviewed. There's, you know, millions of people using VPNs, but there's only a handful that know how to set up VPN servers properly. And I try to reach out to the authors of Strong Swan and they haven't been answering my emails. So I kind of feel on my own. That being said, instead of just publishing something that's half baked, I am really digging into the rabbit hole to make sure that this stuff will be well researched. Now, one thing that came up uh, to my attention is, if possible, we should absolutely disable IP version six if we care about privacy. The reason is, as I just mentioned, some VPNs will leak uh, traffic over IP version six. The other reason is, uh, the other reason has to do with how IP version six works. So I won't go into IP stuff in great detail today, but IP version four has about 4 billion possible IP uh, addresses. And as you know, we're a shit ton of humans on this planet and we're using mobile devices more and more. And all of those mobile devices are assigned an IP by our carriers. So not only our ISPs are assigning IPs to us, but our mobile carriers, which are also ISPs, are assigning IPs directly to those devices. Now, at home, we use a router, right? And the router does something called NAT. And the NAT means that we have a local network, you know, IPs such as uh, 192.168.1.1 or 10. you know, whatever. Those are two subnets that are essentially local. So the way the router works is it NATs stuff from our public IP, we only have one at home and it routes this to devices behind the NAT. So not only does that uh, allow you know multiple devices to use the same public IP, but it also acts as some kind of a firewall, meaning inbound traffic that is not originating from our local network, it doesn't know to which computer to go, so it's kind of blocked. IP version six uh, actually does point to point termination, meaning you know, your, your ISP will say, okay, actually let's step back. IP version six has, I don't remember how many IP per like uh, possibilities, but it's in the trillions or something like this. It's an enormous number, meaning IP version six uh, addresses are not scarce at all. So the way it works is your ISP will actually assign an IP address to all of the devices one by one, meaning when you go on the internet, that device will be talking to servers directly. There is no NAT uh, that is easily configurable, easily configurable for IP version six. <sighs> That's a mouthful. Hopefully you guys are still following me. 
this stuff is pretty new to me as well. So short story is IP version four, true the use of NAT had some kind of a built-in firewall mechanism in the context of IP version six, it doesn't. And that means that your device will probably get a public facing IPv6 address, meaning that this device is much easier to fingerprint. So if you guys have an internet service provider or a carrier that is running something called dual stack, that means that they're running both IPv4, IP version four and IP version six simultaneously, well, you're lucky because you guys get to disable IP version six altogether and that kind of prevents the two critical privacy problems I just mentioned earlier. Without further ado, this episode is about disabling IP version six on Mac OS and on iOS. On iOS, it's only possible to do that for uh, using cellular networks, meaning when you're connected over LTE and stuff, it's not possible using Wi-Fi. One more reason why I don't consider mobile devices good for privacy at all, but that being said, uh, let's do this. So uh, the first thing we want to do is download Apple Configurator. So to do that, we want to go onto the Apple Store and we want to search for Apple Configurator 2. And uh, as you see, I already have it my, on my computer. You would click on download. So I'm going to just open it. Once we're in here, we want to create a new profile. So you can do that by typing command N or going into file, new profile. Now uh, we want to set a name for this here. Okay, actually step back. The way uh, more advanced features are configured on iOS or Mac OS, kind of like the enterprise way, is using something called provisioning profiles. Provisioning profiles are essentially configuration files that can you know, set features that are not available through the graphic user interface of Mac OS or iOS. That's something we're gonna be using when we wanna deploy VPNs with great cryptography to Mac OS and iOS. So this is kind of a precursor step for the future episodes that are coming. Uh, so, but yet yeah, it's kind of like a more simplified version. So let's say we want to call this disable, whoops, IP version six. That's all we need to fill here. Then we want to go into uh, cellular and configure this. And we want to set both the default and the data APN. Now switching to my iPhone, uh, I need to enable recording. So please bear with me a second here. All right, so I'm recording here. So if you go into settings and then, whoops, you go to cellular and then you go into cellular data network. As you can see here, we're using APN, LTE data .APN, no username and password. So this is the information that you want to put here. So if you have a username and a password, you want to fill this in. For us here, we just want to put LTEdata.apn and we want to copy this here as well. And at the bottom here, we want to say that IPv4 is the only protocol that we want to support. Once this is done, you want to hit file and then save. And we're going to call this disable IPv6, put that on the desktop. Okay, once this is done, you want to take your iPhone and you want to plug it in to your computer and it should show up here in all devices. Yes, if you double click on this and you go into profiles, then you want to click add profiles and select disable IPv6, click add. Now the next step is done on the actual iPhone. It's downloaded, you want to go into settings then, uh, whoops, then you want to go in profile, downloaded, install, type your password. As you guys know, I have really shitty passwords on those demo computers and iPhones. Hit install and we're done. That's, I mean, that's, that's quite easy. It takes a few steps. If you don't know nothing about provisioning profiles, that can be kind of awkward looking, but it's actually quite simple to achieve. Uh, now, let me just stop recording on the iPhone here. Okay, uh, on Mac OS, it's actually much easier and we have way more control. On Mac OS, we can disable that for all network interfaces, including Wi-Fi. That is why if you care about privacy and you're not doing super sensitive stuff, 
macOS is a great platform. It is very hackable, as you've seen in the episode on how to spoof Mac addresses and computer names. We can do great stuff on macOS that we can't do on the iPhone. Uh, obviously, if you guys are into super sensitive use cases, I would highly recommend using Debian, uh, not Debian, but like Linux. Uh, I actually like Debian, but yeah, Linux distributions. More on that in future episodes. Uh, so let's pop open a terminal. Uh, the first step we want to do here is list all of the network interfaces we have. As you can see here, we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Thunderbolt Bridge. The next thing we want to do for the uh, interfaces that we're using, so Wi-Fi in my case, and Thunderbolt Ethernet, boom. Oh, actually, Thunder Thunderbolt Bridge, it's called here. Okay, you know what? Uh, I won't do it for Thunderbolt. Uh, the reason I have Thunderbolt Internet here is that's actually something I have on my real computer. I have a little um, Thunderbolt 2 to Ethernet uh, gigabit adapter, and that's what we're seeing here. So. For most users, probably yourself, the only one that you want to run here is this line for Wi-Fi. Once this is done, if we go about opening system preferences and we go into network, once we're here, if we go into advanced uh, and if we go into TCP IP, we can see that configure IPv6 is now off. I'm pretty sure that this off option does not exist in the UI. It's something we have to do using the command line. Uh, but if ever you guys are traveling in another country and you absolutely need to connect onto an ISP that is IPv6 only, that's something that you'll have to disable. So I did include in the, uh, re uh, the privacy guide reference material uh, how to undo things if ever you guys need to. The same is applicable on iOS. So I would keep that in mind. If ever you're traveling to a country, uh, you might have to disable this hack while you're roaming. Um, so yeah, to uh, recap things a bit, IPv6 is pretty dangerous for our privacy. It's dangerous because of IP version 6 leaks when using VPNs. It's dangerous because, you know, devices are assigned an IPv6 address even at home when uh, you're on an IPv6 network. So if you're able to disable it, that's great. Some people in very densely populated countries might not be able to do that because their ISPs or carriers might be IPv6 only. We're definitely heading that way. But in the meantime, uh, yeah, we're going to disable that when possible. Uh, now, the research I've been doing on StrongSwan VPNs is really going well. Uh, I've spent dozens of hours doing that research and kind of hitting my head against the walls. But the good news is I did successfully get the setup working using something called dual stack, meaning in theory, uh, the VPN will assign an IP version 4 and an IP version 6 address and there will be no leaks. More on that as soon as I feel comfortable with the research. I'll be publishing episodes and I'm really looking forward to it because we're going to be setting up Linux servers for the first time for some of you. And that's a really great leap forward for our privacy. So thanks for walking. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're new to this channel, smash that subscribe button. Uh, and as you guys know by now, the YouTube algorithm doesn't really promote privacy content. So if you liked this episode, feel free to like it. Uh, if you have questions, leave them in the comments. And if you feel like sharing this information outside of YouTube, this is great. Please do so. Privacy should be on everyone's minds. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.